When Guyanese-born British actress and Black Panther star Letitia Wright arrived in Guyana on January 27th, she arrived as Letitia Michelle Wright. When the visit to her home country is over and she prepares to leave, she will be leaving as Dr. Letitia Michelle Wright. On Wednesday, the University of Guyana held an extraordinary convocation ceremony inside the George Walcott Lecture Theatre, where the Guyanese superstar was conferred with an honorary doctorate. If you know me very well, then there are big moments um, of honour that happens in my career or my life. I tend, um, I tend not to write a speech. Um, this was uh, true of, of me in 2019 when I sat next to my father the BAFTA um, Awards, which is a very prestigious award, and um, I remember making my way to the BAFTAs and I said, God fill my mouth with whatever you want me to say, if it is your will for me to win. And the moment they said my name, I have my father, and I'm passing by the Davis, and I'm passing Spike Lee, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to say? And if you've ever seen me, uh, I was in an all-white suit. And, and, it, and if you've ever heard that speech, that was literally um, deposited into my spirit from the Lord. And I just wanted to share something that He placed in my heart to share. And I feel like He's doing that right now. So I just want to begin by honouring not only the Vice Chancellor and, and everybody that came together to to do this for me and to honour me. Um, I just want to also honour my father and my grandmother who's here.
no matter where you are going, no matter what your path is, please do it with humility and trust that God will exalt you when it's time. I always waited for my moment. If you know me, you know, especially from yesterday's performance, um, I visited beautiful schools and there was one place in particular we all gathered, I think it was about 30 something schools, it was beautiful. And they reenacted my childhood to the T. <laughs> the long boots and everything, I had the little black panther next to me. Giggling, he said, Why well, is that girl wearing long boots? <laughs> Lo and behold, she was representing me. <laughs> and those moments really came back to me. Being a young girl and, and practicing my art when no one could see. Going to the UK and not having enough to go on holiday or do the other things that the kids did, but I stayed with a little laptop in my room and watched movies. And I would print off the scenes and I would practice them in my room and no one would see. No one would see me practicing my American accent or my African accent or just looking myself in the mirror, believing that I could do it, making myself vision walls that sometimes I would rip up when life would knock me down and knock my family down. You would not believe the obstacles we have overcome to even be here. It was not... It was not given to us. In a silver spoon, we worked very hard. I watched my parents go from job to job, or my grandma, work very hard to send things home for us and help us to just know that we would never be in want. She would give her last to us before we would ever need. So this young girl, these family members working so hard and this, this feeling of, I can make it one day, I don't know what's inside of me, what is it? Thing keeps pulling me to, but I can make it one day. I practiced and I had vision boards and I prayed, and sometimes I got angry, and sometimes I fell into depression, and sometimes I didn't pick myself up. And my mom would come in my room and say, Teach, you could do this. Or my dad would come and say, Please, if there's one thing you do, do this with excellence, and we're behind you. And then the opportunity comes, doors start to open, and you see that preparation meets opportunity. And I was prepared for those auditions. Yes, they wanted a white girl to play Ellie Maynard and Holy, Holy City, but that black girl from Diana. And her, her little accent that seeps through, and the hair that God blessed her with, and her eyes, and the, and the, and the personality that God blessed her with. And said, I belong here. I deserve an opportunity too. And for some reason, God would open the doors of their hearts, and I would have favor that the way they wrote that script and intended for that character to be would change because I walked in. And I walked in with God, and I walked in with purpose. And that continued to happen throughout my career. And then 2015 comes. I think I'm on top of the world. I think everything is worked out and planned for me, but God had other plans. He saw a young girl who, yes, I had dreams, and yes, I have purpose, but he saw a young girl that could, could go into the depths 
of depression by chasing something that was not tangible, that was not real, and I wanted acting for the wrong reasons, and he confronted me with this reality. Why do you want acting? I want to be loved, I want to be accepted, I want to be successful. And he taught me a very important lesson about the lowly seat, and about humility, and about purpose. So he stripped it away. He told me to give up acting. Why are you telling me to give up acting? I have two solid roles, one with Nicole Kidman, one with uh, these famous Hollywood actresses right at my feet. Why are you telling me to give it up? Because I want your heart. Because when I have your heart, it cannot be tainted by what the world has to offer, and it will stay pure. So I went on this journey to find myself and find God. I went on this journey for true self-acceptance and love within my own heart, for my own self, not by what anyone will validate and tell me that I could be, but what God has told me I could be. So I went on that journey, and I fell in love with God. I found peace. My mental health was improving. My joy was back. The meaning of my name, Letitia, is joy my dad picked it. Shouts out to my dad. As I was in my room praying, just filled with so much joy, like, I finally found peace because I have a spiritual connection and I just feel good about my life. God comes knocking. It's time to go back to acting. Are you crazy? <laughs> you just told me to leave, man. It's, it's what you're doing. <laughs> God said, I have your heart now, and it's in a safe space. It's in a safe space where whatever you ask me to do is going to come from purity. Not because you need validation from them. It's because you want purpose. Every role that you pick moving forward from this point will be filled with even more purpose and even more impact. Because I'm here. I dwell inside of you. So as I'm praying in my mother's room and in my own room in my house. I called my agents again, who I told I was going into retirement. <laughs> How can we help you? Okay. I am going to return to acting. And this year was 2016. From this moment on, every moment of an audition, of a script, of an audition uh, that I was blessed to have, I did it with God. I booked Humans, a TV series. I booked, this is not my phone. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> I booked uh, Ready Player One. It's more scene, very small scene. Got to meet Steven Spielberg. I booked The Commuter. Play alongside Liam Neeson. And then I thought that was it for me, I'm good. I said, thank you, Jesus. I got a little money in my pocket. I'm going to have some Jesus time. And he said, no, there's something else. And as I was on the set of humans, I got this strange email saying, we want you to audition for a project, the role that they masked it under was called Sarita. And she was talking to the queen of a country, saying that her brother is uh, going forth to fight for the throne, and she feels that she could fight for it too. I said, I've never seen a black woman written like this before. So I didn't know what I was getting into, but I trusted God, and I told the truth with that tape. And that tape went all the way to Hollywood and came back. And it gave word, I think this is Black Panther. I said, Black Panther? I don't know about Marvel movies. I don't know about comic books. But this role seems very interesting. Nevertheless, I tried to forget about it. But in my prayer closet, God would literally torment me about it. 
pray about Black Panther and asked for it. I said, God, I don't know what to do about this. I kept knocking on my door, pray and ask. And I prayed and I asked and I just surrendered. I said, God, if there's something in this Black Panther movie that's going on, then let your will be done. I sent another tape. And then one day in my prayer room, I heard this very clear voice. And if you have a relationship with God, He speaks in different ways. You just have to find a way that matches with yours and, and how He communicates with you. But He said, I'm about to give you a blessing. I'm about to give you the role of Shuri the Black Panther. And literally came out of my prayer closet and said, Someone, I'm hearing voices, I need to go see a doctor because that was not God. He said, I'm going to give you a few signs. One of those signs is that you're going to go to Los Angeles. And then he gave me more details about other things that I needed to look out for. He said, before you do, you have to tell someone. You have to go to your agent's office and tell them that you just booked the role of Shuri and Black Panther before you get on the plane. I said, you're crazy. <laughs> There's a few people that he's done this to that I know personally, Malachi Kirby, Toby Bakari. Those are my two good brothers of the Lord. And he spoke to them in times past and, and told them that Malachi Kirby would be the new Punta Kente in Roots. And he called the agent and he told them and it was true. So I said to God, I'm not Malachi. I ain't doing that. He said, you have to. Because it's an extension of faith that what I've told you is going to become reality. So I did it. I sat down with my agent and I told him at the time that I'll be the new Shuri and Black Panther and I don't know what this means for me. And he looked at me and he had faith. So I got on a plane. I met Chadwick Boseman. I met Ryan Kudla. And in that moment when I met Chadwick, I knew he was going to be my brother. There's nothing that you could tell me that would separate me from this belief that he was my brother. There's something about him. Later on, I found out that he told Ryan she could be my people. I don't have a sister, but she could be my sister. She's very skilled at what she does. That's my sister. Please stop the I say all of this to say, the journey was not easy getting into that moment. I remember when I finished my audition process and I went away and I stayed in London for like two weeks. And I wasn't hearing a callback about Black Panther. And I said to God, if you changed your mind on it, that's okay. I still honor you. I still love you. I'm still here to be used. I remember the day I got the call and they told me that I put the role of Shuri and Black Panther. And I screamed at the bus, stop, uh, the bus uh, uh, station, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. And I got on that, uh, that bus and I tapped my Oyster card and I thought I could never get on a bus again. <laughs> <laughs> and as the years went by, and as God was able to use my talent, I always made it very, very known to everybody in Hollywood and every interview of where I'm from. This is a country called Guyana. No, it's not Ghana, it's Guyana. <laughs>
know that we can all work together for the good and the empowerment of our country. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God.